In this Q&A video, we're going to answer the question, what's the difference between an AC and a DC isolator? It's a sign of the times that we're living in that this question needs to be asked at all because up until a few years ago, installing and controlling DC circuits would have belonged to electricians working on industrial controls and perhaps vehicle technicians. However, with the rise of photovoltaic panels on private properties, DC is increasingly making its presence felt and getting the right isolator for the right application is really important. So we're going to answer this question partly by experiment and partly by taking apart these isolators from Skarmy. Now, it may be tempting to think of all electricity as pretty much the same. However, there is a fundamental difference between AC and DC. Put simply, if you connect a resistive load to a DC supply, a set amount of current will flow in one direction around the circuit, and it won't change much until it's turned off. If you connect a resistive load to an AC supply, the current is constantly changing value from zero to a maximum value in one direction, and then it drops back to zero again, reverses the direction that it goes around the circuit in, rises back to a maximum value, drops back to zero, and keeps repeating this process. That's why we call it alternating current, because the direction it moves in alternates. In the UK, this entire cycle happens once every 0.02 of a second, or repeats 50 times every second, what we refer to as the frequency of the supply. So what difference does that make? Well, it makes a huge difference when it comes to switching the different types of electricity on and off. I've set up an experiment here to show you how much it differs. Now, please, please don't try this at home as this is just spectacularly dangerous to replicate. Here I've got a 1.25 kilowatt load connected to a 200 volt AC supply, and it's wired through this incredibly technical wooden switch that is not made by Skarmy. It's made by me. Now, when I connect it and then disconnect it, you can see it generates a little bit of a spark as the contacts come apart. This spark is generated because as the contacts start to separate, the voltage is high enough to ionize the air between the contacts, which means this little bit of air becomes a bit more conductive than usual and electricity can pass through it to the other contact. It very quickly, however, reaches the point where the electricity can't jump the gap anymore, and so the spark is extinguished. Now watch what happens when I swap over to a DC supply of the same voltage connected to the same load. Now when I pull the contacts apart, there's a big old arc generated between the two, which is sustained until the contacts are much further apart than they were when we were switching the AC. So why is this arc so much more sustained and harder to break in a DC circuit? Well, it comes back to that fundamental difference between the two types of electricity. Because the AC is changing value all the time and even not flowing for short periods, it means that the flow of current is easier to interrupt. Because the direct current is always flowing in the same direction and doesn't fluctuate very much at all, there's never a moment when the electricity isn't flowing, and so it's harder to get it to stop. So how does a DC isolator differ from an AC isolator, and is it a big deal to get them wrong? Well, here I've got two isolators from Skarmy. One of them is a regular triple pole isolator for emergency switching and locking off, and the other one here is a DC isolator. Now, apart from the colouring, these two isolators look pretty much the same. The yellow and red here doesn't indicate that this is an AC isolator. And if we open them up, they still look very similar inside. The DC isolator has four contacts as well as these links in here. You'll see they both connect one contact to another, so connecting an incoming conductor here and an outgoing one here means that the conductor gets disconnected in two places as the contacts are in series with each other. This effectively makes the air gap between the contacts larger. We saw earlier how far the contact in my wooden switch needed to be apart to disconnect the flow, and this effectively larger air gap in the isolator contacts means that the direct current can be broken using smaller switches. For more information on PV installations, take a look at our sister channel, eFix Energy. And the AC isolator has three poles, in this case with a neutral terminal down here. But even the housing of the internal switches looks exactly the same. Same torque information, same casing, it's all written in the same font. In fact, while researching this video, I literally took these switches completely apart and I couldn't see any physical difference between them at all. Only when you start to read the information off the front do you realise that they have different applications for use. As we saw earlier, to break the flow of DC current is a bit harder to achieve, and so even though these switches look incredibly similar, the DC switch is generally rated to break lower current values, even allowing for the larger air gap created by the interlinked contacts. Looking at the markings on the front of the switch, there's a number of different ratings, and we're not going to get bogged down in all the details of what these codes mean, but the two ratings on the isolators that are the most comparable are DC22A and AC22A. 
Both of these mean switching of mixed resistive and inductive loads, including moderate overloads. And you can see that the AC switch is rated at 20 amps at 690 volts, and the DC switch is only rated at 10 amps and at a slightly lower voltage of 600 volts. So that really illustrates that two very similar switches will disconnect very different values of current depending on whether they're rated for AC or DC. So it's absolutely critical that we don't use a switch design to operate AC for a DC supply. The manufacturer's information simply must be followed in this case. If you'd like to see the range of SCARMI isolators in action, then check out this video right here, and thank you very much for watching.